so as soon as and so that 30 days that they had ordered, I, I respond and give name and address of an employer, of a non-existent employer, because mm -hmm. I just got released. I was telling you earlier <clears throat> um, from their previous false imprisonment of me. So the case was removed to federal court for something like 40 or 45 days. So it went past that 30 days. And being outside the bus lines and out in rural, rural America. What did you normally do, Mr. House? I was, uh, the last job I had, I was the CAD administrator, CAD manager, which is computer aided drafting for the state of Indiana. For I was, the state of Indiana? For the state of Indiana. The state of Indiana the, was your employer? Yeah, I was the director manager <laughs> downtown at the government center in the state of Indiana, Indianapolis. And I was responsible for all state owned assets in the entire state, all, all state hospitals, all state prisons, all. Any kind of renovation, construction, or demolition that exceeded twenty-five thousand dollars, which is most every single project, all those construction for the entire state of Indiana. Yes, all those construction projects. Plans, you, you were the manager. Well, not for the construction projects, but for all the standards and policies of all the blueprints. The all, blueprints. All, that the, go all, out. all the construction drawings. They so all they all had to come through your office. And they all had to do the standards and policies that I set. You know, now, why did you lose that job? because I was arrested by these people out here falsely the last time. And how long did they incarcerate you the last time? A little over two years. They had you locked up for two years? Mostly because I had written a letter to my ex's attorney here, which happens to be the pro tem temporary judge in this same Judge Bowles court, um, advising her to obey the law because she has been documented as committing many dishonest actions in this same custody case. And what was her name? Suzanne Conger. Judge Suzanne Conger? No, she's not a judge. Commissioner? No, she's just an attorney. Oh, she's an attorney in, in, sitting in, in for the judge. In this Danville area, yes, but judges can have what they call pro temp or pro temp or judges. So you have a pro temp judge named Suzanne? Well, no. she She's the attorney for my ex, whatever I want to call her, the mother of, of three of my children. Okay. In this past six years, but she also sits in for Judge Bowles as his pro temp judge on other cases when he's busy. Well, well I'm, I'm. Yeah, I'm, it's a conflict of interest already. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She can't be. They can't be doing this. This thing is so. This, this is so far out of bounds. It's not even funny anymore. Right uh, yeah. Your ex, the mother of your children, yeah, ex has an attorney named Suzanne. Right, Conger. Conger, who sits in. Who happens to sit in. And as pro tem judge in, on your case. No, no. In the same courtroom. In the same courtroom. She has not done pro temping on our case that I know of. Because sometimes the signatures of this judge are just a little squirrely chicken scratch. And you never know really who's signing the orders. But the point is, our case should not be, have never been in this judge's court because her attorney is his frequent pro temp judge. Yeah, I think there's a, there's a conflict. There's a that, conflict. There's, there's a yeah. close relationship. Yes, there is. What uh, yeah. gives rise to, to impropriety the, or the appearance. Or at least the appearance of impropriety. Of impropriety. And this is definitely the appearance <laughs> yes. of impropriety. Definitely. <laughs> Uh, so yes. you asked him to recuse himself. He did not recuse himself. Judge oh, Bowles did not recuse oh, himself. I, oh, I've asked them to do that, each of them, three or four or five times in the past few years. When, when you document within the actual case that they're presiding over, the fact that they have committed felony crimes of perjury, fraud, forgery, and other things. You're saying Judge Bowles, Bowles. Jeffrey Bowles, Bowles, has committed perjury? Um, no, I wouldn't say that he has, but he's been assisting. Assisting in the committing of perjury by your, the mother of your children. Well, by the mother and her attorney. And her attorney. Suzanne Conger, his pro temp judge, yes. He has knowingly allowed the continuation of a fraud upon the court in his own court. Notes, our case is one of the largest custody cases in this county. It encompasses three accordion folders or more maybe by now, I don't know. Uh, I've learned recently that even some of the hand notes that I wasn't aware of, some of his handwritten notes in those folders document that he's known for a long time that the ex, fiance, girlfriend, whatever, is abusive and that's done this and that and the other. I mean, they are so well aware that they're breaking the law. It is baffling 
how they can get away with it still to this day. I have wrote the governor, state agencies, federal, have you, federal have you agencies. you sued him in federal court or in state court? I have not. I have sued for the false imprisonment that I just got released of, the two years. That was a criminal matter, supposedly. I mean, it was, actually. Um, he deprived me of having an attorney on appeal, the same Judge Bowles. There again was a conflict of interest. Why, why am I, you know, I'm being criminally prosecuted for writing a letter to this attorney, Suzanne Conger, telling her to obey the law because Indiana law requires that an attorney must withdraw immediately if they've committed any gross misconduct and professional conduct rules, which is, includes any, any dishonest action, let alone a crime of dishonesty. And so when I wrote her a letter to that and copied a few judges and attorneys and sheriff out here, this is a few years ago now, um, <clears throat> for her to immediately withdraw from the case, they decided they would give her a protective order against me and prosecute me for intimidation for trying to get her to act against her will. In other words, her will, as in, as an attorney, she must obey the law and withdraw. That already got rid of the original judge and the original guardian ad litem, you know, C-O-N-G-E-R. And what city does she practice out of, do you know? Right here, Danville. Danville? Yeah, right here. Judge, judge Jeffrey? Judge Jeffrey, it had Bowles, B-O-L-E-S. The circuit court's on floor three, and it's the highest court of the county in Indiana, circuit courts are. Doesn't he have to be elected? He is elected. He's up for re-election in 2006. Did you oppose him back in 2000? No. Generally, Indiana is highly Republican, and especially Hendricks County here, just overwhelmingly Republican. Frankly, the judges here generally go unopposed, and there probably hasn't been a Democratic judge in this county in the last century. They don't run by party, though, do they? Yeah, they do. They do. Yeah, but they generally run unopposed.